So I modeled this house using the Medik wall extension. Essentially, it allows you to model parametric walls really quickly and you can insert windows and doors and it'll model the siding, the sheathing, all of the framing, the gypsum on the interior. It does all your headers, your rough openings, everything. So I wanted to do this video as a kind of case study of a real world project that I was working on and decided to use this extension. So I wanna show you kind of where the limits are with the extension. Uh, and it's a little weird cause it's like, I kind of feel like, you know, a spoiled rich kid complaining about stupid things because, you know, there's no way I would even attempt to model at this level of detail without the extension. But I still think there's some value in acknowledging some of the limitations uh, with this plugin and kind of the mindset you need to be in while you're working. So let me give you a brief overview of this project. Um, I didn't design this. Um, I'm actually working for an architect. So what I did is I imported her elevations, her CAD elevations and floor plans and kind of got everything, you know, stacked up on top of uh, on top of each other as far as the floor plans go and just kind of used those as reference to trace out the wall locations and kind of coordinate the elevations and floor plans in SketchUp. Now, as far as what I actually used the Medique wall extension for, um, I didn't use it for the roof at all because eventually we're going to get trusses imported into here. So I didn't really want to waste a lot of time modeling something that wasn't going to be the actual product that's going to be kind of delivered. Um, and the other thing is the floor assemblies, those are going to be trusses as well. So I just used very basic uh, massing uh, modeling to represent kind of the floor assembly. So pretty much all of the walls in this model, all of the windows, all of the doors are all from the Medique wall extension. Now, if you want a full overview of the Medique wall extension, I have a review I did a couple years ago uh, that really goes into detail on kind of the full review. So this is going to be a more top level discussion about kind of using this extension in a real world project. So um, all of these windows are just built in from the Medik library. So whenever you insert a door or window, you can sort of configure the window kind of using some of the default library. So there's a big library here, you know, sliders, single hung, double hung, casement windows, awning windows. I did have an issue with some of these kind of four gang windows that are, you know, tight against each other. And actually every every window, even like the double uh the the double gang windows here, you know, there are twin double hung uh window units. Um, but the thing is, is the, the architect wanted kind of, you know, the, the stud in between here and it cased out on the outside instead of it being, you know, two actual kind of joined double hung windows. So in this case, I, I used two separate windows that I inserted here. Now I didn't really pay attention to you know, any framing discrepancies at this stage, because really this level of detail was kind of overkill for what, for my purposes, um, we were basically using this more for space planning and kind of rendering and things like that. Um, so you'll notice that a lot of the framing, there's probably some discrepancies that I left in there. And like a lot of the headers, I just kind of ignored and just used whatever it was default. And that kind of brings me to my first main point, and that is when you're using the Medique wall extension, it, it kind of wants you to know all the answers right as you're modeling. Okay. It's not required. You can leave settings in a default state or whatever. It just becomes challenging down the road when you go to refine the model because for instance, all of these interior doors, I didn't know what style um, they wanted to go with here. So I just picked the default style door. And at some point down the road, I'm going to have to click into each one of these um, doors, scroll down to the drop down menu right here and, you know, pick the correct uh, door style. Okay. And then I'll have to repeat that for every single door in the project. So I kind of wish there was 
a, a, a global attribute library that you could essentially, you know, create an attribute called like, um, you know, interior door style, and then associate that style or attribute to all of the interior doors. And now down the road, when you want to change that style, you have one source of information that you have to update instead of having to manually go through every single door and update it individually, you would just have one association to one parameter and you could, you know, update that style. And then any door that has that, you know, style or parameter attached to it would get updated automatically. That's how I wish it worked. Um, but really everything in the Medique wall extension, um, kind of exists as its own, um, entity. And so when you want to make changes to things, you have to kind of go around and manually do it. So another example is um, siding, you know, so if I don't really know what the siding is going to be for the project, uh, if that changes down the road, I would have to go into that individual wall um, settings and go to the wall colliding material and let's say it's going to be you know this siding instead now there is one really important tool that kind of helps uh you make changes quickly amongst walls and that is the wall copy tool so i can sample this wall here and then i can scroll down and check the cladding um option and now when i click additional walls it'll update those walls with whatever settings I have checked off here. So it's really not too hard to make changes amongst several walls, um, but you don't have that same functionality with uh, doors or windows. Now, another thing you have to get used to is just interfacing with the extension with drop down menus and kind of, you know, written text. I, I do wish that there was a little bit more of a graphical user interface with a lot of this stuff. Um, and again, I feel I feel bad, like complaining. I'm not really complaining. It's just um, it's it's a little it's mentally fatiguing to constantly have to remember. So for example, let's say I want to update the header on this door. So I pull up the, you know, the edit door window and I've got just all of this text, all of these parameters, all these drop down menus, all of these numbers. And so it's, it's a little mentally taxing to have to kind of memorize where the settings are that you want to change. And, um, you know, it, it, I almost wish I could directly, you know, click on the thing I want to change or have some sort of graphical representation of the wall or the door where I could just kind of click on the thing I want to change. So for instance, if I want to change this to a two by six header, I could select this. But if I want to have, you know, a half inch plywood in between, I have to scroll down to the bottom and remember that there's this special, you know, word. Um, that will trigger that so you can customize your own headers and put in this little keyword uh, that way it will fill the um, the space in between the two boards with a flitch plate. So again, I love that the functionality is there and I have to give a ton of credit to the single person who has developed this extension. You know, there's not a big team working on this. It's a single person, Nathaniel Wilkerson, um, and he's done an absolute great job. And definitely, um, you know, you want the functionality nailed down before you get into kind of the more advanced stuff that I'm talking about here. But another example of just kind of that friction is like, you know, changing the door swings. So it's something you have to do pretty much every time you put a door in, you know, the door is not going to, you, know, you have a one in four chance of the door being swung correctly. So you have to, you know, grab the edit door tool, click on that. You need to scroll down to the door swing and then you kind of have to do the mental gymnastics of like, okay, you know, is it right in, right out, uh, left out? Um, and you kind of go through and, and you're like, oh, well, that's nope, that wasn't right. And then you go back and do it again. Um, so it just, it takes a little bit to kind of, um, know exactly how to manipulate the parameters that you want in order to get the results that you want. Um, with door swings specifically, I know uh, plus spec has, I think it's the interact tool, the dynamic component interact tool where you just kind of click on the door and it'll just swap between the four different swing settings. Um, and that's just 
a lot faster. You just click, click, click until you get to the one you want and then you move on and you don't have to like go into any, any menus. Now, another area that can be challenging is when you have, I, I don't know what you call this, a polygon wall where it's not just a rectangle or it's not just a gable. You have to essentially split the wall into two separate walls. Um, it's not really a problem. Um, you do notice when you look at the inside, you will see a seam where the gypsum is, but where it can be uh, a, a big problem is if you have a window or door opening that needs to be right where that split is. So I actually had that problem up here on the top floor. Um, originally I had this wall split right here, um, but I needed to have these windows here. So what I ended up doing was I modeled the gable as a separate wall above. That way I could have this lower wall just be you know, a simple rectangular wall. Now, in this case, I don't know, maybe this is how I would actually frame it uh, instead of balloon framing it, but you will have instances like this where you do kind of need to get creative. So Nathan does have, you know, different wall types on his roadmap. Um, I, right now you essentially have hip, shed and gable, and then just right, you know, regular rectangular wall. Um, in my opinion, I feel like a simple solution instead of having all of these special um, special wall types, I feel like we should be able to draw a face like this and then just, you know, select it and say generate wall and have it just fill in, you know, the area of the custom polygon. So I feel like that would be a better approach than trying to think of every single um, different you know, wall configuration that could possibly be used um, because I, I just don't feel like that's realistic. But with this project uh, specifically, I did not have any real instance where I, I, you know, couldn't use the extension. You know, I was able to figure out um, a way to split the wall and kind of um, arrange it in a way that just worked. Now, another little limitation I came across was the grill options for windows. So I actually had to disable the grills on this one. So there's, you know, a drop down menu with a limited selection of grill configurations. So I wanted four columns with two rows and it's just not an option. So there's three, two, um, there's three, three, but I just could not get the grill option that I was looking for. So I had to essentially disable it. And I can't remember how I have this nested. It's just kind of floating in there, uh, you know, separately along with the trim. So, so that was another thing with these windows that we're getting together. It is possible to have, you know, exterior trim on the window. It's just when you have them gang together with, you know, multiple windows kind of interacting with each other, that was something I ended up just manually modeling in SketchUp. Um, just because, I, I couldn't do it in, in with the Medique uh, kind of standard options. Now, stacked windows are also another um, place where you might not be able to get it to work right. Uh, if the windows are the same size, I think it works fine, but uh, you have to use kind of some of secret features uh, in order to make it work. So I had to create these, these cubes to subtract framing that kind of gets erroneously generated um, due to those windows kind of being on top of one another. So you, you create some geometry, you put it on a special tag so you can hide it, and you just use this special keyword in the name of the group. And then when when the wall is, is generated, whatever this group is intersecting uh, won't be drawn. So if I delete these uh, these objects and then regenerate the wall, you can see we have, you know, these studs kind of running right through this window down here. I think at one point I had something, I think this, this stud was running through here, but, um, that may have worked itself out. So when you meet these limitations, it's nice to know that you do have these kind of hidden features where you can customize, you know, having things added to the wall or subtracted from the wall um, without losing the parametric functionality. Now, you'll also notice a couple little areas like this where I kind of just cheated because I didn't feel like, you know, modeling in the actual wall segment 
that's uh, missing here. So there were just a few little areas like that where I had to do a little return there just visually so there wouldn't be a hole. Now doing gable walls, um, you essentially just define the left and right wall height um, or you can, you can plug in uh, the angle or pitch and it'll kind of figure itself out. And I really didn't have any issues with that. So I was pretty much able to model this entire house with the Medique wall tool without really too many problems. I did have a couple of instances where, you know, I wanted to use the exact model door or window that um, the architect specified. So you do have the ability to create your own custom door library, which I actually have a separate video that kind of walks through how to do that. So if you ever have custom windows, you don't want to use kind of the default library, you can always use your own custom windows and doors. Now it's worth mentioning that, you know, I didn't have all the information that I needed for the framing. You know, I just wasn't at that stage in the project. So I could have always just selected the no framing option with the Medic settings and it would just kind of eliminate all of those options from my parameters and it would just extrude a solid wall. So that's always an option. I just like seeing the studs. Um, it just helps me visualize things a little bit better, kind of gives you visibility through the walls. But that's the thing is if you don't have all that information, you don't have to model at that level of detail. But overall, I really love the Medic wall extension in all of his extensions. He has truss, Medic truss, wall, foundation, floor, Medic project, Medic electrical. Um, he's constantly working on it. So if you want to check it out, I'll have a link in the description below. I am an affiliate, so uh, I'll give you the best deal. The link in the description will be the best deal um, that I know of. Um, you should be able to get a little bit of a discount there. So hopefully you found this a little bit helpful to kind of see contextually, you know, using the Medique wall extension in a real world project. So if you have any questions, leave a comment below, check out my other videos on this extension where I kind of go through the full feature set. Um, cause really I just brushed the surface with this. Um, and other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.